Hello, everybody. Welcome to Health Life Design Podcast. John Euston here, and today we're speaking with Sam Thayers from Core Nine Fitness. Welcome, Sam. Thanks for having me, John. Sam, what a time to, uh, I guess, talk, be talking about fitness. And uh, we're, we're, we're going to mention that word COVID because clearly we we are still in COVID, but uh, we're going to find out about what Core Nine's are doing as a point of difference yeah. with the COVID. But before we do that, let's just go back to Sam and Sam's beginning. How did you get into the fitness industry? Uh, great question. So the main reason I got into the fitness industry was when I was at university, I was playing a lot of sport. Um, I was doing that thing that first-year students do, which is trying to figure out what they wanted to do once they got there. Um, I had an idea to do medicine. I quickly got massively involved with sport and track and field. And then I figured that I'd much prefer to teach people how to perform, how to train, and look more down the preventative medicine approach rather than um, being a a GP or a specialist or something like that or a surgeon. So I uh, ended up electing to do sports science and the rest is history, really. Yeah, fantastic. I love the way you you, you 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 say what I will do when I grow up. I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up because yeah, I'm not I growing be up. Fine, I, I refuse to grow up. But <laughs> yeah. um, but I love the way you found your yeah. direction. And uh, yeah. no, all jokes aside, it, um, it, it it's great to hear that uh, you've got that interest and the qualification behind the industry that you, mm. you're in. It, it's, a, it's a highly competitive industry, isn't it? Very much so. Uh, it like, doesn't matter where you go. If you find one gym, there's at least – 10, 15, 20 within walking distance. Yes. They're everywhere. And there's many different shapes and sizes. They all proclaim to be able to help everyone with everything. Yes. And, you know, that's that's where the competitive excitement comes in, I guess, is, you know, fighting to get your voice heard over over other people who are making just as much noise and saying the exact same things that you are. Sure. Now, we, we, hear, we often hear that, um, you know, weight loss and, 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 I guess, health management is it's, – it's 80% food, 20% exercise. Is yeah. that true or is that just a rumour? <laughs> I love that. Um, I have never seen an iota of research that says an exact percentage and how they found that out. Uh, food definitely – plays a massive part. Yeah. You can't get in shape with just exercise alone and vice versa. You can't get in shape with uh, just food alone. Sure. Uh, you need both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, um, you've, you've had different experiences throughout the industry, but you've ended up in Core 9. Yes. Uh, number one, how did that happen and what is Core 9? That's a really good question. So uh, I've done everything pretty much there is in the industry. I've been a personal trainer. I've been a, a membership consultant. I've been a club manager, a regional manager in corporate um, and global fitness brands. And I think I got to a point where I, I had a little bit of a crossroads in my life and I was looking for something different. Um, I'd recently left a, a role at a, a massive global organization, a really awesome brand. And I just so happened to get invited to an event and you were there actually, funnily enough, I think I bumped into you at that event. And I met the the founders of, of the brand of, of Core 9, really liked the guys, uh, got to understand a little bit about what they were about and then I did a sneak visit down to the facility that was close to where I was and just had a little bit of a pick around and look at what they were actually doing. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. And look, I've done a bit of research. I have I have visited the, the gym, so I've got a bit of understanding yeah. about it. Uh, but what I like about the fact with COVID, yes. you've, you've been able to open quite quickly as opposed to some other organisations. Just tell us a bit of the detail about that. Yeah, I think – Completely unplanned, we're very lucky that the model of how Core 9 runs was perfect for that sort of situation. People train in a specific zone for a period of time and then they move forward and there's a a period of time where you have a break in between your working rounds and it enabled us to keep people in lanes, which is how Core 9 works. It's a four-lane, nine-station, 31-minute workout style program. Okay, so so it takes 31 minutes 31 to minutes. go through and there are nine, nine stations. stations you work through. You start yeah. at the beginning of a lane yeah. and every three minutes you move forward to the next part of the lane. So you'll do three minutes of work, 30 seconds of rest, nine times, uh-huh. which will get you 27 minutes of workout with four minutes of recovery dispersed through those nine rounds. Right. And uh, as I understood, but, but, but before the podcast, you were telling me that each session or, or each component of the day has a personal trainer on site. Yeah, so this was one of the reasons why Core 9, I fell in love with the brand, was you look at many different types of facilities around the world and they have things which I call access facilities. You pay money, you're allowed in, and you figure it out on your own. What I loved about Core 9 was 
what you're paying for is accountability, and that is in the form of someone who is on the gym floor with you every time you turn up. They know every member by name. They know your ailments, your challenges, anything they need to make your workout individualized and personal to you, and they're there with you from station one all the way through to station nine. Okay, so the nine stations, What? What? Give some examples of some of the exercises. What do, they, what do they involve? Yeah, good question. So within the nine stations, the exercises vary day to day. So every day you'll have a different workout. Station one, typically you'll warm up on um, a bike, on a spin bike. You'll spend three minutes on there, but even every session will be different. You might be doing a hill climb for three minutes one day. Another day you might be doing 30 seconds sprinting, 30 seconds relaxing with different levels on the resistance. Uh, station two, one week might be burpees and push-ups. And the next week it, or the next session it might be lunges and squats. Uh-huh. It could be a plank for three minutes. Right. It changes every single time so that it gets rid of the boredom and it creates the ability to have variety every time you turn up so it doesn't feel repetitive. So each day it's a different sequence of exercises. Correct. Uh-huh. So there's a basic format that follows where you'll always begin at the start of the lane. Much like life, you'll progress forward. If you want to be successful, you progress in a forward fashion. Yes. So they, the members will come into the club. They know where they're starting from. So there's no confusion or, or nervousness about, oh, I don't want to look foolish. Uh-huh. I know where to start. And then as they go through, they will step forward one station at a time and everything's displayed on a TV screen next to them so they can see what the exercise is as a visual cue, a video and a written description, Uh as well as the trainer there to help them. Right, right. Now with, um, I keep referring back to COVID because it is the current (laughs) time and uh, and it's it's, it's, it's something that's not going to go away quickly, but it's how we now move forward with it. Uh, We've all heard about the COVID kilos, et cetera. But Mm. uh, one of the things that that I heard you talking about as well, and I'll go back to the fact that is that it's not just about the COVID, it's about the mental health and the benefit that exercise can give to our mental stability, yeah? 100%, and there were things that we saw when people weren't allowed to go out to restaurants, go and sit at a cafe and socialise that it, it became very, very difficult for them. If you're not allowed to go to the gym with your friends, you can't communicate and create relationships and create that human contact that we all need. Yeah. And as a result, it created a lack of activity. A lot of people started well, yes. but after a few weeks, you quickly realise it's not the bricks and mortar you're paying for at a gym. It's that personal touch and that wow. person asking you yep. to push harder haven't seen you in a few days, where have you been? Hey, great to see you today. When are you next in? So that's what they need. They need the relationship. I love the way you've just normalised my (laughs) behaviour. I thought I was was a bit weird, right, a bit out there. But um, I must say the first three weeks I coped with the whole thing, but uh, I started to go absolute nuts. I'm a group person. I need people. I need the energy of people around me. And um, I tried the the, the single exercise uh, route, but uh, it's Mm. certainly not my style. It was very, very hard. And I think what made it easy at the start was – There was nothing else to do. If you Mm. wanted to leave the house, what were you going to do? Go for a walk, I guess, because you couldn't go to a cafe or anything. So it was easy at the start, but it quickly became mundane and monotonous to hold yourself accountable. And I think that's why potentially post-COVID we're starting to see some new attitudes towards not only fitness but the type of fitness service that people want. Yeah, and, and that, that's what you've expressed to me about what Corn is about, hence yeah. is why you're here today because uh, we, we share the same values and it certainly fits with my brand as well. So yeah. thank you. No, I uh, appreciate it. In regard to if you, you've had different experiences across various various platforms within the industry, as you mm-hmm. mentioned, but if you had to explain in a snapshot very quickly Core Nine's unique point of difference, what would you say that was? I think if you asked all the people involved with Core Nine, you might get a slightly different answer. I think for me, my answer would be to be successful in fitness, traditionally, it's required a lot of money because you need a trainer, you need a program written, you need help with nutrition, you need consistent measuring and weigh-ins. And, you know, you, you'll struggle to pay less than $70 for half an hour with a mm. personal trainer yes. plus your membership at a traditional facility. Sure. Probably the biggest point of difference for me, well, there's two. The first one is you pay let's say $49 a week, and you get all of that. You can have a trainer six days a week. You can get help and guidance on your food. You can get constant measuring. The person knows your name when you walk in the front door, which makes a big difference. And probably the second part is it's pretty common knowledge in the industry that group style training is the most successful because it encourages people to stick to it because of the social aspect Uh and the group atmosphere. But one of the limitations is if your favorite class is at 7 a.m. and everyone's booked it, or you have something because of your child commitments or family Mm. commitments or something, you can't go. Mm. 
the second part of what makes Core 9 great and what gravitated me towards it was you don't have to turn up at a specific time. Uh -huh. You get here when you want. If you get stuck in traffic, I don't mind. I'm waiting for you when you get there. Yes. If you get stuck at the lights, the kids uh, forget something at school and you have to rush back home to get something back to them, doesn't matter. You turn up when you, know, you get there. I, I, I've never thought about that, but that mm. in itself has so much benefit, I think, and uh, at, at, at the risk of interrupting you there, but just no, to no. share the experience on a Saturday, I went to a, had a physio appointment. I was, I was 20 minutes late for that mm. appointment and the stress – that I went through and I kept phoning him saying, when's your next appointment? And it's 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 on the hour. I said, I'll pay for the hour, but I'm so stressed in traffic. Traffic's back. Like people have moved back to it. So really if you point. don't have, uh, Sydney's now, or I think we live in a traffic high intense yep. society. So to have that, I think is an enormous benefit. I think just globally, whether it's Sydney or London or Melbourne or anywhere in the world, we're so busy now and our lives are so unpredictable, mm. the only thing you can guarantee is at some point you'll be sleeping. Yes. Everything else is up for grabs. Yes. And exactly what you're saying, anything can happen at any time. So to have that flexibility to turn up when you wish yes. and someone's waiting for you yeah. and they're not grumpy that you're late because they right. weren't expecting a specific time. Because time, time is money. Time makes is money. a big, big yeah. difference. And I think that's the one thing that I loved and why I got involved with the brand was I could tell that they'd thought about the consumer and the member rather than how do we make a business that suits us. Yes. It's, it's very much customer-centric. Sure, sure. Sam, we my understanding, and I hope I've got the right um, understanding here, is that um, we uh, the obesity rate is is through the roof. Um, mental um, mental illness is – we're now more aware of it mm -hmm. um, and, and potentially – there is more of it that needs to be managed. Why, with so many opportunities to exercise outdoors and indoors with the various fitness institutions now, do you think that's still the case? I think that – well, it's a good question. This is going to be my opinion rather than a fact. Yeah. But from my perspective of what I have seen, the reason things like mental health and all of these other challenges are still there is I still don't think that we value fitness as highly or our health as highly as we think. Mm. Uh, all too often, if you've ever been in the industry, we all know the, the excuses. I don't have time to train. Sure. I don't have enough money to train. Oh, I've got too many commitments with my family. But the one thing that nobody denies, if you lose your health or you lose your life, you can't have any of those things. Yes, yes, yes. But yet we'd still put it at the bottom of our list of importance. And we know in times of financial challenges that gym memberships are one of the first things to go. Mm. But yet we've just gone through a period of isolation and it is a fact that the data is telling us that people couldn't train without a gym. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, okay, interesting, you know, yeah. Very interesting thought to think. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm not by any means um, understanding the, the severity or the seriousness of mental health and not saying that fitness will fix it because it's just Absolutely one component. Absolutely not, and, but, but it, is it something contributes can, can, very well. Can help, to, yeah, correct, yeah, yeah. It's a contributing the, um, factor. What are some of the things, I guess, what, what are some of the biggest things that people do wrong in their – I guess, their, their undertaking of starting training? That is a really good question. I think this is the one thing that I try my best to instill in people the first time I meet them is I, I always use silly analogies. If you wanted to run 100 metres or you wanted to complete a 100 metre race and it didn't matter if it was gold or silver or last, all you have to do is put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. The one thing you wouldn't do is run 20 metres walk back to the start because you got tired and then start from the start again. Mm -hmm. And so what I always say to people when they start is the biggest mistake I see is giving up and going back to the start. If you do 20 metres a time, eventually you're going to cross that 100 metre line. It may not yeah. be in first place, but you'll finish if you take those 20 metres in a chunk at a time. And if people take their training and don't put so much pressure on themselves to lose 10 kilos in six weeks mm. or all of these other like really un – unrealistic yes. uh, goals, yes. they don't put that pressure on themselves and they just focus on three sessions a week, consistently training, yes. watching their portions yes. and not putting pressure on themselves to hit a specific target too soon, yes. then those people tend to be more successful. Okay. Yep. Great response. Thank you. Um, once again, this is your opinion uh, yeah. and what alerts me to this is I did a conference, as you know, in, in December mm. um, on personal branding and it was offshore. So I had to make sure, it was a seven-day conference, I had to make sure that I understood everybody's dietary requirements, yeah. allergies, etc. Out of the 20 people, 11 people had an allergy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but it was very real to me to think, wow, this is what's going on. And touch wood, I don't suffer from allergy yet that I know of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we had to cater for 
those people for the right reasons. So do you feel nutrition is a big part of fitness is where I'm getting to here. Do yep. you feel allergies are on the increase? Um, veganism is now the is now the new black. Um, where are we going with nutrition in your opinion? I think that the one thing I love about where we seem to be going at the moment is people are asking more questions. I think there is a lot of pro-veganism and not paleo. There's so many different things that you can approach. And I'm, I'm by no means a specialist in these things, but I think the great thing is that we're asking questions. I don't think there is a correct answer for all for nutrition because of allergies. Like mm -hmm. Someone might have something that I have and it creates a, an inflammatory response for them. So that's not going to be any good mm -hmm. uh, for those people. But I think um, – from a nutritional perspective, we, we need to just go back to some of the basic things and we need to not get caught up too much in what the, the buzzword is at the moment. The yes. one thing that is super consistent, whether it's weight loss or maintaining health, is portion control, yeah. calorie control, mm -hmm. and making sure that you consume no more calories than the ones that you burn. Gosh, Sam, you sound so disciplined. I'm not. <laughs> well, you're giving me incredible guilt here. I'm thinking, my goodness, how much do I have to take on board here? But I we'll get it. Talk, I get we'll it. Talk I later. get it. Okay, all good, all good. I love your um, positioning here of your branding. I'm seeing that the mm. screens behind us has the Core Nine brand on it, and uh, you you fit in just beautifully here with the set. It's almost like it was staged. You've got that lovely green, that grass green. There. I actually have this as my wallpaper at home. That's why it looks so good. I just <laughs> feel at home. <laughs> well, it works. I love the strength of the brand, and I think I mean branding is a big part of any business, and uh, clearly that's what he's showing here. But um, I do love the green because it does. We we relate to it. It's a nature color, and as, as people in color psychology, it's a it's a very clever color to have mm. with the fitness brand, and um, it clearly works in this environment. Where um, if if people want to sign up to Core Nine, what's what's the process? It's really simple. You just jump online and you can search for us on there for your local club. You can go to the website and search for the club by location. Pop into the club. You can just walk in. We're there ready for you, much like a member would be if they walked in. Uh -huh. uh, and we'll go through a consultation, initial measurements, all of those things that you would expect from a personal training induction rather yes. than a gym sign-up. And it's very, very straightforward. You can do it as simply as turning on your phone, downloading an app, and it's very, very seamless. Fantastic. Now, your particular gym is where? Yeah. Uh, it's in Warriwood. It's uh -huh. right on the border of Warriwood and um, Mona Vale and the northern beaches of Sydney. Okay, right, fantastic. So, um, um, but, but Core 9 is all around Australia, several franchises, Correct. but uh, you're here championing the uh, Warriwood uh, I've complex got a big, today. I've, I've got to give props to, to my own clubs, aren't Absolutely. I? Absolutely, <laughs> but you are, you are yeah. the owner, my friend. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so, uh, so why not? Um, Let's, let's hope that um, this is now – we keep going in that direction because it. Um, I'd hate to think we have to step back and um, go back into isolation, et cetera. But uh, I guess if anybody does want to know more about Core 9, contact you on the website being? I would be uh, www.core9fitness.com.au Fantastic. and then you would select the Warriorwood Club if you were coming out to my club. That would be amazing. Would you please <laughs> thank Sam Thayers for joining Health Life Design Podcast today. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, John.